about the Poisson distribution. It's actually a very important uh, distribution to understand in biology because it is relevant to lots of situations. For example, supposing you're trying to infect a uh, culture of cells with a virus. Let's say you have a million cells. How many viruses should you use if you want to have most of the cells infected? Well, how about a million? Well, you'd think, you know, one virus every cell, that would work well. It turns out almost a third of your cells will not be infected if you infect a million cells with a million virus particles. You actually need probably three million in order to get 95% of your cells infected. The Poisson distribution tells you about that. So Poisson actually used for his uh, example the uh, frequency with which soldiers in Napoleon's army were kicked to death in each regiment by a mule. And there are lots of other examples of situations in life that pertain to the Poisson distribution. When I was a grad student, we had a wonderful lab exercise in uh, the uh, lab course that I taught that used a giant Hershey bar as the example for the Poisson distribution. And this was a Hershey bar with almonds, and like each square had some number of almonds in it, and you got to eat the square of the Hershey bar and then count the number of almonds. And what we determined was that some squares had none, some had one, some had two, some had three. And lo and behold, the numbers of squares that had each number of almonds fit the Poisson distribution. Lots of other things in life fit the Poisson distribution. So why do things actually work this way? And let me uh, give you an example that I think explains this well. So, just a so let's imagine that we have a small bacterial culture that we are going to infect with a virus. Let's have only, let's say, 10 bacterial cells. And let's follow the bacterial culture being infected by the virus, one virus at a time. So first virus in, infects a bacteria. Second one in, at random, infects another bacteria. The chances of these two uh, virus infections being the same bacteria are really quite small. They're one in ten, basically. Here comes a third uh, virus in infecting a third bacteria. Now the chances that the next virus infecting a bacteria uh, that's already infected start to go up. You might get, in the next infection, a virus infecting uh, uh, a bacteria that's already infected. This is now the class of two events. And here we still have uh, a whole series of uh, bacteria that have not yet get inf gotten infected. In fact, again, maybe by chance, a bacteria that's not gotten infected gets infected. In fact, again, maybe another one. But then in fact, again, and now there's a chance that one that's already infected gets infected, and so on. The chances, as you get fewer and fewer uninfected bacteria, that you'll hit an uninfected bacteria, start to be lower and lower relative to ones that are already infected. So basically, as time goes on, your zero class, which is the one you care about, gets smaller and smaller. But it takes, as you can see from the equation here, uh, it takes about uh, a, uh, a third of the bacteria one over E of the bacteria will be uninfected when the number of infections, the number of virus particles that are infected equals the number of bacteria. In order to get 95% infected, you're going to have to go to a uh, ratio of virus particles to bacteria of about 3. At that point, the zero class will be about 0.05, exactly the number from our problem, if you remember in reading assignment number 2. because we found that the number of uh, individuals who didn't have retinoblastoma to emerge to the zero class was about 0.05. From that value, we could then calculate what the, act, what the uh, likely mean number of events uh, was in this distribution where we expect tumor numbers to be 0, 1, 2, and so on. Uh, 
uh, in the uh, individuals under study. And what we cared about there was the number in the one tumor class. And we could calculate that simply by if the zero class is 0.05, you can calculate what the average number of occurrences of the event are using Poisson distribution. And you can calculate the frequency of the one class from there. That's now up on the web uh, as the uh, answer in the answer sheet for paper assignment number two. I won't do the calculation on the board for you here, but I think you get the idea that from measuring the zero class, you're able to calculate what the expected distribution of the other classes might be. And I think you can also see that if you keep doing this, you keep infecting the cells more and more until the mean number of infections starts to get to a uh, finite number that's significantly larger than zero, now you're moving towards the Gaussian distribution. So the Poisson distribution is a limit case of a Gaussian